I mean, I know my shirt's on right now, but that don't mean it's going to be on in 15 seconds. <laughs> That's why I got a, a button down on, Grease. I can just, I can, I got quick access to the chest hair. everybody, welcome to this week's episode of This Is My Bourbon Podcast, uh, the official podcast of This Is My Bourbon Shop, where we talk about what makes bourbon the spirit of Kentucky. My name is Perry. Thank you all so much for joining me here tonight or today. I don't care when you're listening. It doesn't really matter. Uh, and joining me this week are two very special guests. Uh, I am super happy to have them on. Uh, you might know them as the podcast. Uh, out of Nashville, Tennessee. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, please welcome. W- welcome. Yes, you're talking uh, about me. Welcome. Welcome. <laughs> <laughs> please welcome uh, Will and the Grease of the podcast. We're here. We're here. Yeah, Will gets like the welcome, but I mean, I don't think there's any kind of what is it? Dub- uh, not a double Grease, on Don't. What is it don't called? Try you get- to insert your name into that. It won't. It won't come out right. That's what I'm saying. We're gonna we're That's, gonna give you the the grease teens uh, <laughs> greetings now. Yeah. Nah, oh, work. the greens. Never mind. It's close. <laughs> Are you talking? Yeah, points points for trying. I don't know trying. what you're originally trying to say. Green green screens. <laughs> the video podcast, man. Yeah. I'm gonna tell you green screen. It was supposed yeah. to be the greetings, and it turned into I, I, it was a mess. It doesn't matter. Anyway, oh. uh, yeah, it, it seasons don't. greasing, seasons greasings. Oh, uh, yeah. we called him. That sounds uh, you all out. What there. did we call you, Grease, when you're sad? What did we say the other day? I don't know. I know, uh, <laughs> Grease. Like, um. Oh no. yeah, what was it? Oh, yeah, the emo Grease. Yeah, emo Grease. Oh, Grease. Greaves. <laughs> oh right. Yeah. 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 With a V, he just he grieves all the time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's sad Grease. He can't get past it. <laughs> Yeah, that's uh man. Gr- Greaves comes out when Greaves is on the back end of an E. H. Taylor barrel proof. Is what ends up happening? <laughs> uh-huh. He gets all emotional. Man, you're only like one glass in though. Uh, don't don't patronize me, Perry. <laughs> <laughs> is that is that the correct use of that? Will I don't know. You're gonna have to tell. Uh, you're gonna have to tell me if I'm being. Accurate. I think it was not it, only it was not only close. here. It, it, we'll give it to you. I, li- I like that, Will. It, you know we're we're what five minutes in, and Will has gone from guest to producer of the episode. Um, oh yeah, well no, he produces me. I, I mean, <laughs> I'm going to call on him nine times out of ten. I mean, we do that. I mean, in heck, real the life. other day we were in a we were in a Mapco getting some scratch off tickets, and I had I basically had to talk through Will just to <laughs> get in and out of there without spending a hundred dollars. You just take just take my twenty. Just take my twenty. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. No, we I can get fifty-two we were... dollar jumbo bucks. <laughs> yeah, man. That's what he said. We're bound to hit the jack. We're well. We're. I mean, here's the deal. With more, the more tickets you play, the more likely you're going to hit the jack. Well, sure. Right. I mean, it's only said. Law of it's only statistics. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, we kind of we kind of touched on it just a second ago, but you know, as uh, we normally do with the show here, uh, we're going to be drinking throughout. Uh, I am sipping on. Uh, some E. H. Taylor straight rye, um, nice, which was gifted to me by uh, Swan the Bourbon Finder, my my bourbon guy. Uh, Will and Grease, what are y'all drinking on tonight? Wait a second, you have a bourbon guy? I do have a bourbon guy. Yeah, dang. <laughs> I, w- I wish we had a bourbon guy. I feel like we're our own bourbon Grease, guy. We have a bourbon do you guys guy. want me to hook you all up? About? Yes, the answer well, is yes. But Grease, we have a bourbon guy. Yeah, I mean, well, I'm. <laughs> Yeah, you're right. You, you we do about? have a bourbon guy. <laughs> we do have a bourbon guy. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to get. I, well, I'm trying to get like two or three more bourbon guys. You know what I'm saying? I'm trying to get an arsenal of bourbon. Hey, guys. Grease. Mm. He he asked what we're drinking, so I'm going to go ahead and answer his question. Um, okay, <laughs> I've, got, I've got Rock Hill Farms right now, keeping us on track. <laughs> Dude, Rock Hill Farms is, I feel like that's just everywhere right What are you now. even talking about? I, I thought the same thing. I haven't seen Rock Hill Except Farms on a in shelf Tennessee, in Will. forever. 
No, but I mean, well, okay, so everybody's posting them, one. Number two, my buddy Jay was like in, I don't know, like Minnesota the other day. He was like, hey, man, I'm at the liquor store here. And he did like a video chat with me. Uh And I was like, whoa, 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 go back. What is that? (laughs) <laughs> he's like, Rocky I was like, he's like, I was like, what are they charging for that? It was like forty nine ninety nine, and I was like, holy Buy crap! It now, so holy so crap. Grease, so what, I want to. Sometimes I have to interpret for uh, for the Grease um, Perry, and <laughs> what, he, what he just said is that he saw people on the internet post pictures of a whiskey which they may or may not have just bought at the time because, you know, people uh, don't always tell the truth on the Internet. But on top of that, his friend found one bottle in Minnesota. So, yeah, they're everywhere right now, man. (laughs) No, no, they're time stamped on Facebook, Will. When you go through it, it tells you the day and time. That's when they posted it, it, but that's when, like, people put, like, oh, I'm putting this Pappy Van Winkle in my Diet Coke. It doesn't mean they're actually doing it, Grease. (laughs) Oh, (laughs) jeez. Yeah, I mean, Man, I you never thought about it that way, did you? No. <laughs> All right. Move, moving on. So, Grease, on. what are you, moving on? Grease, what are you drinking we're on? An alloca- we're in allocation season right now, and so, you know, Buffalo <laughs> Trace is uh, letting go of a few high-dollar items right now. So, um, I don't have the Pappy 15. I don't have the Pappy 20. I don't have the Pappy 23, but I got this E.H. Taylor Barrel Brew. <laughs> see what he did there? <laughs> you see what I did? Man. Um, that's a that's some quality you know, I, uh, podcasting right there. Let me just tell you that. I much. think I just thought about this. The first podcast we ever did, I started off with E.H. Taylor Small Batch. And the first, my, my bourbon show... I did an E.H. Taylor product. You are. Again. That's fantastic, actually. I'm I, like, a, I like. I'm pigeonhole me. I'm pigeon. <laughs> what, is that what, wait, is that hey, Perry? What he's doing that? is auditioning. <laughs> by the way. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When, Look, when man, the podcast if, uh, doesn't uh-huh. work out. <laughs> Look, I'm man. Gonna, if uh, if uh, Curtis and Tanner fall through, uh, <laughs> we'll we'll recruit you. Yeah, and, I don't. I don't uh, even acknowledge them at this point. So. <laughs> I will say this: the other, the on the first show, I listened to the first show the other day, and they at first they didn't seem like they wanted to be there. And I guarantee no, I, I, you, right now, by the end of it, they sure as heck wanted to be there. Has well, by the by the end of that first, by the end of that it first, was almost episode, like Perry uh, just hit record when he had a couple of buddies over, and he was like, "Hey, y'all, y'all want to be on this show?" And they're like, "You guys, uh, you guys want to try something out?" <laughs> sure sounds good well see here's the funny will actually tricked me in being in our first episode too so oh, i yeah. can relate yeah we didn't release it <laughs> barry you didn't know what you're you getting yourself into tonight did you <laughs> i didn't i didn't but you know what i that this is the beauty of uh of podcasting is that uh you know i i like to say we're uncut and unfiltered here on this is my bourbon podcast uh-huh. so uh I, I hope you didn't have an itinerary <laughs> ooh, because ooh. Uh, grease won't let you i get like to. what he did I like yeah. what he did just yeah. there. Yeah, see, see, nice. it's all about the the bourbon terminology here. Hey, Grease, what um, would, what would a bourbon that's uncut and unfiltered be? A barrel strength. That a boy. Well, yeah, there's that's I was gonna say something else. But, <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'll give you that one. That that's a that technically, I think you answered that right. <laughs> yeah, I know I did. <laughs> What are you trying to get me to say? I was just going to say like non chill filtered. Non-chill filtered. Yeah, there you go. He knows what I was I knew you were. I knew you were, I knew you were fishing for that. But I mean, here's the deal. Non-chill filtered. I mean, I I the the question is still out there. Is it good or is it not? I don't know. Well, speaking of speaking of non-chill filtered. This. Go, go ahead. ahead. Go ahead, Grace. <laughs> yeah, well, gonna, I was just going to say saying things. So. <laughs> well, I was just going to say that you know, when there was a there was a uh, an OWA, actually they just call it Weller Antique now. Sorry, I don't want to show my age around here. Uh, um, you old fart. But there was a Weller Antique pick the other day, and everybody was like, "Oh, dude, you got to go get it, man! It's non chill filtered." I didn't go get it. I so um, and I'm bummed before, I didn't. But you know what? We're all we're all out of money right now. <laughs> it's no, it's November. We're we're supposed uh-huh. to be. Um, yeah. And then, you know, and then the wife's going to, here's the deal. You're going to be out shopping and, and the wife's going to be like, Hey babe, we need to get so-and-so and so-and-so a gift is a hundred dollars. Okay. To do. And you're looking at her like, no baby. Like, I mean, 15, <laughs> 15 20. And she's going to look at you like, why? 
And you're going to have to sit there and say, baby, I, I went in that store the other day and they, baby, they had that William LaRue Weller at BTAC just sitting there on the shelf. I, I paid $200 for it. And she's going to be like, yeah. are you, and you're sitting there thinking, man, I got a great deal. <laughs> it's a six hundred dollar. It's a six hundred dollar trade value bourbon right now. What has happened? She, what has happened? By the way, this has turned into like <laughs> philosophy with the grease. <laughs> well, no, Mar- I just, marriage I just, marriage counseling I'm, with the grease. Well, it's not even marriage. Ca- I'm not telling you what the right or wrong thing is doing. <laughs> this is what, I'm just telling you, you better be ready with an answer. Is what I'm saying. Okay, because my answer is is. My answer is, is I went to Papa C Pies today and I stacked up on a couple of uh, Gear Deli chocolate pies oh. and when, and and I'm stashing them in my office. And when things get heated, I know what to do. I'm going to go upstairs, <laughs> go grab them, insert them into the equation slash the conversation slash the table. And then she's going to, it's not going to, it's not going to be a get out of jail free card, but it's going to simmer everything down and it's going to take the heat off. Just it, let, just, I mean, everybody has something prepared. That's all. Everybody's got a Garadelli you, pie. Yeah. Is what he's trying to say. I, I don't even. And don't, I, don't sit there and think your good looks counts for that. Cause it don't. Oh, I've tried that. Oh, Grease. Oh man. Well, I, I was gonna I was gonna say before we kind of hop into the uh, the subject of uh, doing a whiskey podcast um, that I actually did grab a bottle of a uh, store pick Weller Antique uh, from Liquor Barn a few weeks ago, and um, it, it also was non chill filtered, but it, it was terrible. Huh, really? <laughs> like it was a it was a it was objectively bad. That's um, interesting. That's crazy. Nothing, I feel like Liquor Barn would have like a good team for that, but maybe not. See, here's here's the thing though. Like Liquor Barn's uh, team consists of one guy. Hmm. So mm. like, it, it's one guy going out with his own uh, palate, and it, it it is consistently hit or miss. That's um, interesting. It, yeah. Yeah, um, so, and too, yeah they're I also agree. operating would... on that side of things of like there's so much volume coming in and out of those stores that they're like, you know what? True. It's OK. If I'm, it's not so, I'm like super disappointed in that because I I'm a Weller antique fanboy and I have a lot of store picks. And while a lot of them are very different and off profile. I've not had. Well, I mean, it can't be that bad, Perry. You're showing it to me, and it looks like it's about three quarters drunk. So, well, this isn't uh, this this isn't my uh, this isn't my store pick. This is just the regular old Weller Antique. Gotcha. Um, oh, okay, that's just a regular one. Gotcha. So, yeah, well, but yeah. This I, is what I, I was, love the store uh, pick antiques because because there's a lot of variants in them, which is you know can be a good thing or a bad thing. But I don't think I've had a like a bad one. I I'll, I'll send y'all a sample of this. <laughs> uh, <laughs> All right, can't wait. You, you need you need to you need to experience a bourbon that is absolutely nothing but uh, ethanol. Oh, and okay. I, I mean, it 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 is a hundred percent not worth it. So it's um, like hot off. So you're fresh saying off this guy at liquor barn when he pick when he picked that pick he uh, may or may not have come from another distillery earlier that day picking there's a another good barrel. there's a good chance of that i i mean i i would be willing to say that he'd already been dipping in a little bit before he yeah uh, uh he Makes made sense. it to buffalo I've been, trace i've been known to make some bad judgment calls on bourbon but grease <laughs> uh, who of us haven't you know right i mean right. we're we're all in the we're all in the same boat here yeah we're not um, perfect so quickly before before we hop into uh our, our discussion topic. Um, we're actually going to be tonight reviewing um, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof uh, Batch B five one seven. And uh, guys, I don't know if you've seen, uh, but as I, of, I have seen, I have seen it. You have you have seen what I'm about to say? Yep. Number one, man. <laughs> as of about like an hour and a half ago on November sixteenth, twenty seventeen. Whiskey Advocate named Elijah Craig uh, Barrel Proof B five one seven batch Whiskey of the Year. Woohoo! Um, yeah, so I, I find it a little bit serendipitous that we're going to be. Uh, yeah, I mean we're t- super relevant on uh, on the bourbon. <laughs> yeah, we're super relevant. Um, in fact, uh, you know we're we're the first one to release it. No, uh, the funny thing is, is I don't have a backup of this one. What? 
<laughs> We're the first ones I'd... to release it. <laughs> no, I mean like a, a show. A sh- well, did you no, like, did you also like how he you know, just uh, completely inserted himself into like host status? I didn't know what was going yeah, on like, there. Yeah, for we're a the second. first ones to do this here on your show. <laughs> oh, well, I, that wasn't my point. My point was is that is that I opened it and I don't have a backup, and now it's number one. So now we're just going to drink number. Oh one. man, it's a, it's, so it's a big day for him. So not not. Yeah, so uh, uh, Grease, you realize that you didn't have to just open this for me. You didn't have to open this for little old me. Um. Well, Perry, some people would say you're worth it. Okay, oh. your your mom for once she <laughs> told me it was you're worth it. <laughs> you know, the jury's still out on it on on my side of things, but you know, I mean, we're leaning towards it being okay. Look, man, I I'm hoping to have you guys on again in the future, but you know, we're also however long into this episode, we'll see how it goes. But you know, I like to consider us. Mild acquaintances. We're, oh, yeah. we're getting tighter. <laughs> we're getting tighter. We're like we're like the index and middle finger when you cross your fingers. You know what I mean? <laughs> so we're wrapping around each other. It might not be full. It might not be a full wrap because I don't think you can physically do that. But I, <laughs> it's a pretty good bond. We're, it's not we're, bottled in bond, but I mean it's you know we're brothers in bourbon. How's that? Yeah. yeah, there you go. <laughs> We're uncut and unfiltered brothers in bourbon. There we Barrel go. Proof. Um, so I, I, I like to, uh, as we have guests on the show, ask them the question, uh, how'd y'all get into bourbon? So whoever wants to go first, um, go for it. I, um, well, I'll let you, I'll I, talk to hel- you. I held Grease down and poured uh, some Jim, Jim <laughs> Bean down his throat one day. And he's like, man, that's pretty dang good. So, Wait, that was you? Yeah, that was me. I had a mask on. <laughs> <laughs> Dang it. Man, you didn't I even thought, have a... Man, I thought you were some cute Belmont girl. <laughs> I've had the story all wrong. <laughs> no. Uh, we all I... know a cute Belmont girl. I almost went to Belmont oh. for college. Yeah, me I too. I did. <laughs> so, so. I'm just kidding. I, I went there. I just don't have much to show for it. <laughs> So anyway, whoever wants to go I'll, first, I'll how'd jump, y'all get I'll jump in here. I um All right, cool. So uh, it, it, the f- first drink I had at college was a Bud Light. But the first drink I had a, at a bar in college uh was like the first week of my freshman year and it was a uh, bourbon and coke that my cousin just went up to the bar and ordered them for us. And he was like, here's a bourbon cup. And so um, I had kind of, I'd been like fascinated by, I've, I've lived kind of all over the Southeast and always been kind of interested in Southern culture and um, things of the like. And so I don't know, there was something about that though, that being my like first bar drink in college that I was like, man, that's going to be like my, my drink now. And my parents moved to Kentucky while I was in college. So I never, um, I never lived there, but I would go visit there. And my parents still live in Kentucky, so I go visit. I was Kentucky. about to ask. I, I, yeah, I was about to ask. I thought that your folks still lived here. They too. do, yeah, but I, I've never like personally. I've had a driver's license from Kentucky, but I've never actually spent more than a few weeks at a time there. Um, and so it, uh, uh, it them them moving there kind of uh, kind of added to that mystique as well having that i could kind of explore that when i go visit go to distilleries and things like that and um so just kind of it grew from there and but was more of a um uh, you know uh maker's mark was a splurge and jim beam was the college uh around the house or evan williams you know on game day and um right then when uh, a couple of years ago you know just kind of started trying new things and getting a little bit more into it. And then we started a podcast about it. So <laughs> <laughs> it was a very quick time jump right. there. That, yeah. Uh, yeah. There's, it's like in fly. Seinfeld, like a yada, yada, yada. And then uh, yeah, exactly. Here I am. It's like, you can't yada, yada, yada. You just missed the whole story. You can't yada, yada through the good part. Yeah, you can't yada, yeah. yada through bourbon. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> cool. Uh, Grease, what about you, bud? 
Um, I just moved on to this 1982 wild turkey. Eight year Ooh, old. Oh, are we not supposed man. to be drinking the other one yet? What? Oh, no, you can move on. No, you don't. Oh, wait, which one? The one that we're doing. Don't. Oh, the no, actual don't review yet. one? No, not yet. Oh, sorry. I haven't tried it. Uh, what are you talking about? Oh, uh, you know, you, this back. Back. <laughs> Man, my oh. story is real simple. I was at the lake. My buddy. this guy with a mask appeared and poured Jim Beam down the road. <laughs> yeah, they had, they had a maker's mark. I well I he, I originally and he said we're gonna do a podcast <laughs> in fifteen years and you're just gonna have to accept it. Uh-huh. That's, yeah, that's exactly. I, right. I, uh, Grace is going. Grace is I going. What's vodka. a podcast? <laughs> I had some vodka <laughs> and uh, and I had some uh, Jägermeister and uh, so my drinks of choice back in the day were vodka Sprite and and Jäger bombs. Um, and so I had that at the lake and then the and then we I ran out. And then my buddies had some Maker's Mark. <laughs> and you, so, ran, you ran out in what capacity? Because what that sounds like to me is you you ran out of the house stark naked or something. Ran, yeah, <laughs> in, into the lake. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, that was so long ago. We didn't have we didn't have camera phones back in the day, so videos <laughs> and photos were not easily accessible. So the world the may never know what what condition you ran out in. <laughs> It's lost yeah, to time, I, um, and that's okay. Yeah, I I do know that Mama Grease came outside later on, and 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 basically took the jet ski keys away from us. Uh. <laughs> so I know, I I know something along those lines happened, at, and this was two in the morning. We were just jetting up and down the day. Is that is that when the oh boat gosh. ended up in the middle of the lake? Uh yes, when it when it, yes, it that was the next morning. We had to go and get our boat that was in the middle of the cove because we forgot to put the dang rope on it. <laughs> <laughs> we forgot to tie it up at the dock. Anyway, that night uh, was amazing. Anyway, little, so I ran out and so then I had make this work. And I didn't love it at first, but man, it's kind of like a a beer on a hot summer day. Like when you're Definitely growing, like, agree. The first time that I had a beer um, that I really enjoyed and liked was right after I got done cutting grass, and I was looking in the beer fridge for a water, which that doesn't make any sense. And um, <laughs> and then there's a beer, and so I popped that open. And I freaking chugged that beer. And let me go ahead and tell you something right now. That made me feel real good. Um, so then, ever since I kind of I kind of <laughs> dug beer, um, and so, but uh, yeah, I mean. Makers, I didn't love at first, um, but man, uh, it was my drink of choice very quickly after. So that was during college. Cool. All that was during college. Uh, sure, sure, yeah, yeah. We'll we'll just accept that part of the story as being true. Oh no, it was no. I mean, that was legit. I mean, I I mean, I was having vodka and Jaeger <laughs> before combined and as, beer as a mixed drink. Oh may or may not have had some Zima along the way with some Jolly Ranchers thrown in, but have you uh, have you uh, gone out and uh, tried to find the limited release Zima yet? Or uh... you ain't got to go too far; it's still sitting there. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I, w- I wanted to I wanted to grab some and get it signed by somebody important, but I didn't. <laughs> Like one of those, you could get just one any, of the just like anybody? The Budweiser Clydesdales could sign it for you. See, that's what I was thinking is that it's just, it could just be anybody important. Like, uh, you know, I don't know who the governor of Tennessee is. but <laughs> Yeah, no, that's what I was going to say. I was going to say Harry, like the mayor of Nashville. Governor Bill like, Hey, Haslam. man, can you mind signing this Zima? Uh, no, I, I'm sorry. Who's the, who's the governor of uh, Kentucky? Uh, that would be, oh, no, I know this. Um, Matt uh, Bevan. Wow. Wow. All right. Chew. Well, I, I know a senator gonna, from Kentucky. Try, try another Rand one. Rand Paul. Try another one. Yeah, you know, in, you know Rand state. Paul. Rand Paul's been in the news a lot recently. Any state. Oh, name a <laughs> state. I'll tell you the governor. <laughs> T- tell me. I know all of them. Uh, Arizona. Oh, my gosh. Oh, all this right. One's, that one's easy. Jan, oh, what's her name? No, Grease. That was, that was 10 years ago. No, that's... <laughs> Jan Brewer? <laughs> Green, she hasn't been yeah. in office for like half a decade. <laughs> yes. Where'd she go? What'd she Not do? 
governor. I thought she was like I thought she was responsible for like ending like daylight savings time or something. That's why we're in uh, standard time right now. It's all thanks. Who's to ended her. daylight yeah. savings time? No one. Because I want to. I want to get on board crazy. with them. Yeah, ex- exactly. <laughs> what do you mean? Cool. I appreciate y'all. What do you mean? What do you mean? What Who's you mean, the what one do you mean to? What do I mean? I don't know. <laughs> y'all are sitting there talking about standard time and all this other stuff with Jan Brewer. And I'm sitting there and thinking we got something to appreciate her with. And then y'all are sitting there like, oh, man, she's been out of office for five years. Doesn't mean she didn't make her dang mark on this world. Look, Jan, Jan Brewer her. is well before my time. I'm just going to go ahead and throw that one out there. Really? Um, How old am I? How old am I? I could have sworn she was. I'm. Wait. <laughs> <laughs> is Grease, you didn't ID him before the podcast? Is Jimmy is podcast. Jimmy Carter the governor of Georgia still? Or am I missing something? <laughs> that gone. <laughs> no, oh, man. I heard he this guy's name Sonny Purdue or something like that. Sonny Purdue's n- not still know. the I don't, governor. Why are we of Georgia? talking about governors? Why are we talking about what? governors? The only governors not- I really do know is on semi trucks because I sit there and pass them and wave I'm like, "Hey, what's up? You got a governor?" <laughs> And they're just sitting well, there just like, I, I hate that guy. Perry, none of this is He's usable like, for your podcast. I'm very sorry. No, every, every, <laughs> every, every bit of it is. Uh, but we are going to try to, <laughs> we are going to try to move on to bourbon a little bit. Um, yeah, I already, I already moved on. So it's you guys. I'm yeah. Sorry. Well, we'll, we'll, we'll back up when the time comes. But uh, I, I want to talk a little bit because, um, like, b- before I was uh, actually a bourbon podcaster, um, and, and, you know, I use that term as loosely as I possibly can. Mm-hmm. Um, I was a, a fan of the podcast. Well, we appreciate that. Um, yeah. And I mean, I, I, you know, a, every week I look forward to, uh, uh, along with a few other, other shows that I follow pretty, uh, religiously. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I, I always get real excited when, when an episode of the podcast, uh, pops up on my uh, my iTunes podcast app. Um so uh it, it like I I don't want to get too too gushy or anything, but uh you know, you you guys were a, a, a big source of inspiration and kind of a um uh a reason to to do this show. Um before it, it was ever like actually uh realized or anything. And now, um, and now, Greece so, is ruining all of all of that. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, this is all great and fine, but have you had Crystal Burgers because of the show? At all? <laughs> he's trying to get a sponsor. If you have, if well, he's, you have, he's... I have been, I have been successful. And <laughs> Crystal, if you're listening right here, right now, because I, know, I sure as heck know y'all don't listen to our show. <laughs> If you listen to this show, just understand I'm in the trenches out here pulling for you. Okay, that's all I got. So the short answer is no, yeah. but the long answer is uh, we don't have Crystal around Richmond, Kentucky. Oh, um, are you in Richmond? I, I don't. I am in Richmond. Yeah. So um, my uh, my family and I, because my my parents live south of Richmond, and so a lot of times when we're driving to Lexington. Uh, because that's where you go. Um, we yes. stop in Richmond to eat at Thai Smile. It's a Thai restaurant. No kidding. Yeah, Thai Smile is literally three minutes from my house. It's fantastic. I love Thai Smile. So good. So we will. Yeah. Fake news. Uh, next, will next time that you're in Richmond, let me know, yeah. and uh, I'll have you over, and we'll we'll have a pour. Sounds good. Yeah, I'd love that. Two or three, or, or don't yeah, let be... them know, and then text them afterwards and be like, "Ha ha, ha, ha. <laughs> hey, that's <laughs> <my house>. great." <laughs> that's that's what Greece would and do. The, and then, and then Perry that's crazy said, oh, though. Man, I... I had I had this sample of uh, I don't know a, a half bottle of Pappy Twenty Three here, man. I know you haven't had it before. I was going to let you have a sip, <laughs> and then Will's like, "Dad, gum it." Well, we just we just reviewed uh, uh, Van Winkle Ten for the first time last night, and um, 
I'd, I'd never had Van Winkle 10, but I've had everything else in the in the vertical of... Uh, Will just scored one. I did, yeah. What do you think of oh, it? Oh, yeah? No kidding. Uh, I... So, last Uh-oh, year... Trade um, bait. And I, I've... I've <laughs> <laughs> so I've, I've said this before on the show last year i won uh, a bottle of 12 mm-hmm. to buy through kroger um mm-hmm. through their pappy holidays and um i i really liked it at the time mm-hmm. um that was before i had had weller 12 um and i i like van winkle 12 i don't like it as much as i do pappy or uh, excuse me uh weller 12 yeah um but i i like van winkle 10 better than i do van winkle 12 okay yeah yeah i, I mean it, that. It, it 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 has it has a more complex palette i um, like the proof i like the uh, 107 it's, it's proof. A bit, i do i do too it's a it's a, a better overall experience for me yeah. um in terms of a bourbon than the the 12 is i think the 12 is honestly a little too hot Mm -hmm. um i i think the 10 sits pretty perfectly uh Mm -hmm. on the palate um but i i gave it a pretty high score so uh on the show um we we kind of developed this uh this rating system recently of um four different categories for our our review section Mm -hmm. uh and it's nose palette finish and price Mm -hmm. Um, and overall I gave it a 16 out of 20 Okay, because each, each, uh, category is out of five. Mm-hmm. Um, so, you know, it, it, 16 out of 20 is, That's is really good. pretty high. Yeah, I okay. rated, uh, I, yeah, I, I rated, uh, William LaRue Weller higher than I did, um, Pappy 10, but you know, the William LaRue Weller is in an entirely different category, I think, because it's. You know, it's older, it's uh, uncut, unfiltered, and, and all that good stuff. Right, um, right. But, you know, it, it, I I'd honestly, it, if I could find uh, Van Winkle 10 as an everyday sipper, I absolutely would, uh, yeah. it, you know, imbibe. Um, so, anyway, that that's a... I don't even remember what we were talking about before we got into this, but uh. <laughs> oh, we were talking about Ty Smile. I'm officially pouring this. So oh, Ty Smile. <laughs> I just poured. So, I just poured the stuff that we're supposed to drink. Yeah, I'm just so, gonna look at it until you tell me when we can drink it. Oh, I've already had it. It's so, really good. <laughs> I know you yeah, have I'm, Will. Well, it was named uh, Whiskey of the Year by Whiskey Advocate, mm-hmm. so uh, you know it's got to be at least a little bit decent. Um, I poured a little bit too. I'm going to let it, uh, sit like, uh, like Grease is. Um, but, uh, b- before we get to that, I, I definitely want to talk about, um, actually having, uh, a bourbon podcast and the, the kind of like niche market that we, uh, are sitting in. Mm-hmm. Um, and like, I, I, I don't want to, I, I always think of, having something like a bourbon or whiskey podcast as being a community. Yeah. Um, right. You know, and, uh, I, I, I try to, um, I've, I've mentioned the podcast on the show a couple times before now, mm-hmm. um, before actually having you guys on, um, and saying, you know, go, go and check them out because I, I think that, um, each show provides something different to the experience of, um, you know, listening to, to these reviews or, um, you know, it, it, it's all different forms of, uh, entertainment. Right. Um, so I, I, I want to kind of bring it down to a more, uh, origin level. Um, mm-hmm. why'd you guys start doing the, the podcast? Will I came told up to me. had to. <laughs> 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 yeah, so... Uh, you know, I um, I work in radio production. Um, oh, cool! And so I uh, I I've always loved um, 
audio entertainment that's not music, I guess is the easiest way to describe that because, you know, you can't just say radio now, but I, <laughs> a lot of times I use the term, I ter- use the term radio and I mean podcasting as well. Um, do you, do you shy away from the term like shock jock? Uh, well, I don't, I don't work, I don't work in shock jock radio. Okay. So, okay, um, good. So, good. so y- yeah, but, um, yeah, so I, uh, <laughs> And I, I had, um, I guess it's a natural extension of that. Like I love what I do. And so it's, uh, you know, it's work is, is not a chore for me. Um, so I'm always looking at other avenues to explore and, and things of that nature. And, um, I, I produce and work with some other podcasts as well, um, and so Grease and I were talking and we're like, hey, we should just do a podcast about whiskey. And it uh, kind of, you know, and did some very basic research and it, it kind of a lot of bourbon podcasts all kind of came about roughly around the same time. But at the time, they're really uh, bourbon pursuit was really like the only one out there when yeah. uh, when we decided to launch. And so we did it pretty quickly. And I Grease always likes to say. I said, hey, Grease, we're doing a bourbon podcast, and um, the only thing I want to say is, like, uh, how'd I say it, Grease? You say it better than I do. <laughs> what, what was that one instruction I gave you? It was, like, the only thing I said. Of course I do. Uh, well, I, well you, you just basically said, I just... I, Nothing, nothing's off limits. I just need you to talk. I don't know what you said. I, I said you basically just gave me free reign. I think to I talk said like whatever, whatever I wanted to whatever talk about. Whatever pops in your head, you're allowed to say it. Um, that was it. So yeah, the first that thing that we, comes to your head, you're allowed to say it. And I and I like got big old wide eyes. And I told Grease, <laughs> "Hey, come over. We're going to do a test run." But he didn't know it wasn't actually a test run. So we did an episode, and then I just put it up, and we started from there. So you really did kind of trick him into doing the very first episode. Yeah, yeah. I was like, hey, let's just test it and see how it goes. And we did a 30-minute show, and then we put it up, and that was the start of it. So, and I do, I do want to touch on one thing that you were kind of saying how it, you know, it's a niche and it's more of a community. Um, and, and this is from my perspective of a like radio producer. Um, a lot of people think of podcasts as, you know, like uh, on demand internet radio, which I guess in theory it kind of is, but I can't produce like podcasts the same way that I produce like talk radio in another medium that it, it's not radio on demand as much as it is a another social network and i think of podcast is sure yeah like very social media and that term Mm -hmm. doesn't normally get applied to podcasts but you can put a show out there but unless you're um in that community and having a community feel and meeting people like we're doing now like um it's it's not uh it's not going to go anywhere and you're also not going to have a lot of fun because you're going to feel like you're talking to no one. And I don't know. So that that's one big thing I always tell people. I was like, well, it, it's really a social media and um, a social medium, rather. <laughs> and we uh, you do that. That's kind of one thing that we've learned from is like I've gained uh, probably per like uh, if you were looking at every year of my life, I've gained the most friends in the year and a half we've done the podcast uh the podcast rather than i have like any other individual <laughs> span of that time and they're people i sure. truly consider friends so it's uh yeah it, that that's really the the biggest upside for me has been the friendship and the community that we've gained um and there was one time i ran through walmart with my shirt off and i, I think i gained more friends in that <laughs> moment <laughs> no grease those were restraining orders Man, those weren't friends. Yeah. You're not. Yeah, I'm amazed I'm, I'm, that there I'm isn't like them. a like a T-shirt uh, for the podcast of Grease just bare chested, um, and you know. <laughs> Don't give them ideas. That that'll happen <laughs> if you say it. Look, man. Th- I mean, we've made we've made shirts with less inspiration. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like uh, one one of the reasons that like this show kind of happened was because. Um, like I, I am primarily a graphic designer, um, 
So, like, I, I already had the shop going for bourbon-themed apparel and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, so, like, you know, that I, I kind of brought that down to a serious level, but let me just say, Grease, that's, that's definitely possible. <laughs> Grease, take your shirt off right now so he knows what you look like, and he'll design it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just yeah. going to sit back and watch how this unfolds. I don't, oh, man. I, just, I don't even want to think about what the hashtag would be. You know what I mean? <laughs> hashtag <laughs> Grease Chest. <laughs> <laughs> Goodness gracious. Oh, I like that one. Oh, that's a good one. Um, so yeah. Grease, why did uh, I I've had I've had that I've had that one in my pocket for a while. <laughs> I'll send well, it to Chris, you. I'll, Chris Thomas has to. I'll 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 donate that uh, I that shirt a, design. I have to a you. prepared statement. <laughs> <laughs> no, I let man. me let me back up for a second before we uh talk to you a little bit, Grease, about why you like you wanted to get into the show. Um I I really enjoy listening to episodes like um, Grease's prepared statement. <laughs> yeah. And then the follow-up to that. Which um, may or may not have been, pre- been prepared by Will. <laughs> I don't know. You know, I, <laughs> hold on, my phone, my phone fell down. Sorry, I'm trying yeah. to... Um, I, I I just I love um I love continuity and uh and stuff like that mm-hmm. and uh I I think that you guys have done a real good job of um and I don't mean this in this I I'm going to say this and it's going to sound negative but I like the the characters I guess that you guys have <laughs> You guys have kind of become, you know, it's, throughout the. I think we've done a decent job with um, a different aspect, and that's and that's another side of this whole thing. And it's called storytelling. It's like definitely we have, um, you know, we've and you're talking about the continuity, you know, between each episode and stuff like that. I mean, yes, are we building on our knowledge from day one, one hundred and ten percent? But I mean, we're also trying to give i mean like like will said bourbon pursuit i mean if you need information if you want to hear you know a master distiller talk about mash bills and like and yeah. the, the bourbon economics of the business like man that's a great show to listen to yeah, you know what i mean definitely. um now the thing about podcasts is like you got to bring a different element to it and from day one Will was just like, and the, it's the only reason he brought me on. He's not going to bring me on to tell facts. You know what I mean? <laughs> Lord knows. You know, we would <laughs> we would just talk about, you know, we'd come to work every day and like, or, you know, on Monday or Tuesday, and Will would ask, like, hey, man, like, do you, you try any new bourbons over the weekend? And, we, you know, we would just chit-chat, you know, and that and we just kind of sure. took that element, you know, and, and just hit the record button. And, you know, we just, we you know, it's story first, it, it's it's inter- I think our show is more entertainment first with a basis of bourbon. You know what I yeah. mean? And, and, um, and like that- we're having a great time. And I think that that way we're not going to get too burnt out on it. You know what I mean? Because I mean, definitely, it's it's tough stuff doing like a weekly show. I mean, Will's editing. You know, till the wee hours of the morning sometimes. Um, especially, you know, when I go off on the rails, like I'm doing right now, but I mean, you know, I mean, there's certain, there's, there's, there's a lot of work to it, man. Like keeping up with social media, posting yeah. daily, you know, connecting with, uh, distilleries, connecting with, you know, your listeners, like to maintain and to progress, um, you know, I mean, it, it, it's a lot of time. It's a lot of work. And, but you know, the great part about it is we're, you know, Instead of necessarily talking about bourbon, I mean, our listeners, you know, we've got this group called the Podcasters, and I mean, half half of the banter in there is is basically talking about what the crap I said about a week ago. Yeah, you know, exactly. and I'm having to listen back. I'm having to listen back to the episode just to know what the heck they're talking about because nine times out of ten, I don't remember what I say, mm-hmm. and you know. Um, but I mean, yeah, that, I mean, that's so because that we're drinking bourbon grease. <laughs> exactly. <I know. laughs> real, real good bourbon. But I mean, so there's, you know, 
I, I, that's kind of what we've done. And Will had the vision for it. And like every day I freaking just am like, I'm like, man, like without Will, this doesn't happen. And like, it's one of my favorite things that I've ever been a part Aww. of. And I do not, and I don't take it lightly. Um, <laughs> How do I turn my like camera Will, off? I'm crying. <laughs> Well, and like Will said, bud. and like Will said, he's met some of the some of the coolest and most friends you know in this year. Sure. And uh, man, I mean, it's right up there for me in in that in that department for sure. I mean, there's you know, there's there's some great dudes. There's some great people. The generosity aspect of this whole thing is just stupid. Like it's just like I mean, we'll we'll have six. I mean, there was one time one guy sent us. All 10 recipes of four roses. Just like, here you go, man. This will be fun for the show. Okay. Yeah. Thanks, bro. I've This bottle right here, this bottle right here, I am 99% sure this came from um, uh, Bourbon Spartan. <laughs> I want to I wanna, hey, uh, hey, clarify because hey, this is this – is, <laughs> This is still an audio yeah, medium. To, I'll let you Grease do that. Is holding up. I'll let you do that. <laughs> <laughs> Grease, oh, is, Grease is holding up the bottle of uh, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof uh, Batch B five one seven. We're about to taste, which we're about to like, actually I'm, like I'm, dive into I'm, and everything. This show doesn't happen without our 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 generous generous uh, generous uh, generous uh, gen- generous gen- generous friends. listener. <laughs> Greaserosity is what I call it. <laughs> or Michigan. I don't think he's in Detroit, but. Anyway, boys, guy, I've been looking at this way too long. When are we drinking this? Uh, thing? So or when are we going to talk? Me, about let me let me take a little sip of water real it. quick because <laughs> where's my water? <laughs> yeah, well, we'll we'll jump ahead of the curve and everything. I'm sorry, um, I forgot. But <laughs> it's all right. It's an early, you know, this is a uh, a fairly new podcast. So uh, you know, if you're not familiar with the uh, the form and everything, you know, you're you're bound to make mistakes. It's true. Will. It's true. <laughs> yeah. You know, I what? make hey, at least three or four mistakes I'm like, by the time I brush my teeth. There, I'm, you know, normally <laughs> I'm, I'm sitting there thinking, I'm like, I have to be super on point because I don't want to have to edit both me and the grease. But now that it's all on you, man, hey, I'm just cutting loose tonight. So. Oh man, uh, uh, you know what? I, I was up until like uh, like one one thirty last night editing editing an uh-huh. episode. So uh, yeah, I, I I know what you're saying, but. Uh, yeah, I, I, I just want to um, before before we get to the actual review, um, I, I just want to say that um, I'm happy to be a part of the this community that you guys have, um, really I I think built up. Um, I I think you all have have really um, been a, an an integral uh, stepping stone towards shows like uh this is my bourbon podcast being possible um because like we're we're not just trying to be um we're not trying to be the bourbon pursuit um Mm -hmm. right we're not trying to be the bourbon daily we're not trying to be the bourbon show um and i'm not trying to knock uh the abv network or um the the bourbon pursuit by any means because what they Mm -hmm. do is really interesting and really unique um but I, I just enjoy this um, <clears throat> I enjoy this little community that we have of like friends getting together and drinking bourbon and mm-hmm. um, talking about what what makes it so special. Um, so it, in in that spirit, I would I would go ahead and say cheers, cheers. to you guys, <laughs> and uh, thank you all for for uh, paving the way. Um, and on that note. Let's go ahead and jump into uh, the the review for the episode, which is um, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. Uh, at, at, I've said this like a hundred times this episode, but uh, it's Elijah Craig uh, Barrel Proof Batch B five one seven, which was just named um, about two hours ago by uh, officially by Whiskey Advocate as the uh, Bourbon of the Year. I probably poured too much. Um, for <laughs> for a well, uh, see, that because looks like Reese, an Reese gave me a two there, ounce maybe. sample, and I only poured about half of it, so I could enjoy some later. <laughs> yeah, sure. Um, I, I I like the uh, the idea of being able to, um, you know, go go back a little bit throughout throughout the uh, the review and um, be mm-hmm. able to understand it. Um, so as I said, um, 
we have four categories uh, of review on the show. Um, it is uh, nose, palate, finish, and price. Um, so as we kind of go through uh, each each step of that, um, you know, keep that in mind as as we're experiencing this bourbon. But um, what do you guys think about the nose on this so far? Man, okay, nose for me. I honestly thought that I was about to dive into something finished. There's like this kind of like this, like a drier wine nose to me on this. Like like a and, dried fruit kind of thing. Yeah, I get that. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, and it's and and I don't that normally doesn't stick out to me like that on the nose. Like that's a normal palate thing or a finished thing for me. Yeah. Um, but that's exactly what I got off of. Yeah. It. See, I'm, and, uh, I'm getting the... a lot of oak coming through for me. I'm tasting that age. Oh, there's tons of oak. Or like yeah, for sure. smelling the age rather than tasting with the <laughs> nose. <laughs> now, uh, nose uh, tasting uh, it. <laughs> keep, keep in mind too that this is just a 12 year old bourbon. Um, mm-hmm. it, you know, for for everybody at home. Also, I want to point out. Um, you know, I, I I like to make sure that everybody is aware that we're all drinking out of the same style of glass. Um, we're we're all sampling out of Glencairn glasses, mm-hmm. um, for the purpose of this review. Um, yeah, and just because we talked about it earlier, this is non chill filtered. Says it on the bottle, uncut, unfiltered, twelve uh, year old bourbon. And uh, what's, like, the, what's I don't, the proof on it? Um, the proof on the it bottle? is one twenty four point two. Yeah, uh, so uh, we probably should have established this earlier on, but uh, um, typically when uh, <laughs> when Will and the Grease are uh, recording for the podcast, they're in the same room, uh, but they are not tonight. So uh, everything's being kind of uh, um, pasted together, I guess, for this episode. It's, it's basically an open <laughs> invitation for both of us to get a little loosey goosey. Exactly, we're at the house. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Um, so uh, Grease provided a, a, a sample of uh, this barrel proof to Will. Um, for for this the purpose of reviewing uh this episode um so anyway just to kind of run through the numbers and i'm the... his sugar mama in case anybody doesn't know that <laughs> um is that the way to say that or is it baby daddy no i'm not your baby daddy I'm your, your sugar, sugar daddy mama. sugar daddy of bourbon oh you're, yeah you're, that's my, it. you're my mama <laughs> green <I do. laughs> yeah. Grease, what's the what's Mama the name Grease? of the um the concoction that you all make every every summer? I cannot remember it. Summer brew. Oh, we just call it summer. Summer, summer brew. brew. Okay, <laughs> I've never I've never had it, but yeah, and, we just and for people who we ha- call it summer brew, and let me go ahead and tell you, man, you gotta you gotta tread lightly with that stuff. So so for people who you got to, I, I, we're we're again skewing off of the topic, but for people who um have not listened to the podcast, um. <laughs> what are the ingredients in the summer brew? Okay, you take a frozen Minute Maid lemonade concentrate and you pour it into a pitcher. Frozen. <laughs> then if you, it's frozen, don't then you, you just you... dump it? <laughs> not, how do you, pour, oh, yeah, how do you okay, pour frozen? Fine, you dump it. Fine, you <laughs> dump it. And then... Then you take... It's a 45-minute uh, process involving a, a, a torch. And a hair dryer. You have to yeah. melt it. Yeah, a no, hair no. dryer. <laughs> All right. So you take the open container and you pour vodka in it. I don't care what vodka. My, my mom raves about Sky, and I don't even think... Here's the deal. Don't spend money on vodka. <laughs> There's zero reason to spend money on vodka. Just get vodka. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah. no, I agree. So anyway, I agree. They fill, they fill I agree. It you pour it in a pitcher. Uh, you pour it in a pitcher. Uh, and um, my joke was lost on y'all. Anyway, then you take <laughs> three Coronas Uh-oh. in the bottle, and then you just you pour it in there. And then you're good to go. Just mix it all up. Start drinking it. I'm telling you right now, don't make a ton. Okay? So you got to be careful. It doesn't uh, make a ton. It doesn't. I mean, so if two people finish off that pitcher... <laughs> you could be in for trouble. And that's why that's why the last time my mom and I got together and we had that, uh there was two shark incidents. <laughs> Which you can hear 
on uh, the the story of on uh, what was that? That was like like five or six weeks ago on the on the podcast. Um, when Mama Grease uh, came out. It, yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> anyway, so um, we are uh, uh, we're a- attempting to review uh, the whiskey of the year by Whiskey Advocate, um, Elijah Craig Barrel Proof. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I've been I've been drinking it for about thirty minutes now, so I I sure, love it. It's yeah. real good. <laughs> uh, uh, Will's got a, a real good idea of uh, what he feels about it. Um, Will, have you already finished off your glass? No, no, no. Will's had about an hour. Oh, gosh. No, I've got, uh, <laughs> I've, I've only had about a half an ounce of it, so. Um. Okay, so, um, do, do y'all have uh, water readily available? Uh, I can go fetch some, but I don't have any right here. Do <clears throat> I need well, the, some? Uh, the reason I ask is because, like, with uh, with something this high proof, um, I like to add like a uh, couple drops in just to um, see what it does to the uh-huh. the overall experience of the bourbon. You know um, what I would say so, about this though? It it is high proof, but this does not drink like one twenty four. Oh no, not at all, not at all. It's drinking I, I like a is... hundred and ten, like a good Russell's Reserve. You know, mm-hmm. that's what I, you know. It's it's got that smoothness to it, and I, I mean the age is wearing well on it. Um, I know it's age dated. I know it's age dated twelve years, but I could see there being some older whiskey in this batch. No, I I I definitely agree with that. I think that it, um, you know, the, the there's something really um mature about this this bourbon. Um, yeah. I uh, and 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 I'm I'm really happy with it. I uh, I I don't think that the the oak over overpowers the the overall flavor though. No, personally, and I mean, I may be jumping ahead, but um, it it has that flavor uh, that is like so traditional bourbon flavor. There's so many things out there now that it's almost trying to differentiate themselves like, yeah. oh, the you know, the, this one's super spicy because it's a high rye mash bill and uh, not that high rye mash bills haven't been around for forever but i don't know i just feel like the the flavor profiles of a lot of bourbons these days are uh, uh across the board are the spectrum is widening and sure this this to me just has a just a something very classic uh about it that i really am enjoying when i drink it and like you said i'm getting a good oak flavor to it but it's not just a like a oak bomb or something that's throwing me off sure yeah um, that's my that's my palate for sure right there this is just a it's it's a very home to me mm-hmm. like there's nothing there's nothing on the palate that i'm you know I, i'm not sitting there saying whoa this is so special i'm not but i'm also not saying that this is you know man this is not up to par this is a very good bourbon mm-hmm. yeah um, absolutely but there's not there's not there's not like a you know, an oily, thick, um, you know, texture to it. It's, you know, it's, it's just, I mean, it, yeah, it just sits there right at home. It's a great barrel proof, good proof for me. I love it. Um, yeah, but yeah, that's, that's kind of the palette there. It's just kind of, it kind of lands home. Yeah. And, and, and I've, I've said for a, a long time too, that, uh, Elijah Craig is one of those bourbons. And I, I pair that with like, Buffalo Trace um, as being a, a real traditional flavor, mm-hmm. um, and and I think that uh, this this barrel proof in particular really brings out a lot of those um, traditional, yeah, the just the the traditional kind of palate that that comes with with bourbon. Yeah, the um, vanilla, the the caramel, and the oak, like just kind of in a little bit, uh, just ever so slight nuttiness to it. Yeah, it's kind of what definitely. I get. Definitely, it's that it's. I I drink this and I go. This is the perfect marriage between um, what you know all the all the the aspects of what I want um, in a bourbon. So, mm-hmm. um, I I say we go ahead and um, b- before we jump into the the numerics of it, um, 
I bought this bottle for sixty-five dollars. Um, Grease, what did you pay Wait, for that's, yours? That's the retail, right? That's like sixty-five th- is MSRP, I think. I think so. Yeah, I yeah. think so. Yeah. I I well, this one this one was free. I I oh well, yeah, that's right. One, sorry, the other, the, sorry. The A batch that I got was um was uh fifty nine ninety no yeah fifty nine ninety nine that's not bad yeah, yeah. okay and so that was I'd... at my my cousin's shop in Clayton Georgia Smitty's <laughs> small shout out to to Smitty's there uh-huh. yeah small shout out to Smitty's <laughs> so I I say I say we go ahead and uh, make that a a sixty dollar price point. Um, yeah, that's fair. So, Will, Will, do you want to go ahead and uh, give your uh, four tiered review for this uh, this bourbon? Right. So it's nose, palate, finish, price. Is that right? Just to make yes, sure sir. I'm good. Okay. Yep. Uh, and it's out of five. One to five. Um, yeah. Mm-hmm. Nose. I'd say it's a five. It's. Uh, I, I like the oak I was getting out of it, and I think. Um, I almost think less is more on the nose to me. It it wasn't something that was like just blowing my mind. Like I, I did get some of the dried fruit you guys were talking about, but it wasn't something like, oh my gosh, I'm smelling so many crazy things. Like, I don't know. It was just a um, comforting nose is probably the way I'd put it. It, it smelled like a good bourbon. Um, and I liked that I was getting the oak on it. So I'd give it a five. Um, palette. I, I think uh, like we were talking about just how it's, um, the, the high proof was not overpowering. It drank like a younger, uh, not a younger, it drank, drank like a lower proofed bourbon. It has a lot of maturity, a lot of Oak. I'd give that a five. Uh, the finish I am not super thrilled with. It's, it's kind of short, um, for what I was thinking. I will drop that at a, can you do halves? Uh, we, we like to round up, but okay, uh, I'll do a three. I was going to do okay. two and a half, so I'll round up to three. And okay. then the price I'd say is four. So I'm okay. giving it a 17 total. And the price, the one thing I, I mean, it's, a, it's still 60 bucks. So that's, you know, it, you know, you're still having to shell out some money for it, but I would say, you know, compared to single barrel, um, barrel picks of four roses which i love that are you know barrel proof single barrel and but there's a lot of variance in it uh i i like this i like the consistency you're going to get out of knowing what's coming out of the batch at that price point and that's about the same price as a four roses single barrel so i give it a four i don't think i'd ever give like a a 60 dollar bourbon like a straight up five unless it's um just something uh, that b- completely obliterates the competition, but yeah. I want to. I want to. I want to clarify uh, clarify something real quick. Um, yeah, you just said four roses single barrel for sixty dollars. Mm hmm. And, and the that's not picks. a the barrel strength. Oh, okay, okay, okay. I just wanted to make sure that single you weren't barrel, talking barrel about barrel strength. Okay, yeah. I wanted to make sure you weren't talking mm-hmm. about just the the basic. No, no, uh, no, no. The regular barrel. one is is significantly less money. Yeah, <laughs> I would, like uh, specifically talking about the the different <laughs> recipes of barrel picks. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Sometimes you can find them the single barrel, you know, cask strength picks for fifty five. Sure, um, but yeah, for the most part, he's not. You're not talking, the, talking about the. I'm not talking about the thirty five dollar single barrel. No. <laughs> yeah okay i just i just wanted to make sure before like because i was like if perry was like man y'all are getting screwed down there <laughs> in nashville come up to kentucky stop buying stop buying four rows of single barrel down in nashville i mean right anyway uh okay so overall you said 17 out of 20 17 yep Which, okay i mean cool. that's a good score i like it yeah that's not that's not bad at all grease go for it okay um the nose is a four and it's, and I don't, man. So I don't know how to like, uh, you know, charismatically rate this. I don't, if, if that's a, I don't know if that's the way to say this. <laughs> Let me go ahead and tell you right now. The nose is one of my favorite things. Um, I'm picking up some interesting things in the nose that I don't normally. And that's dried fruit that y'all clarified with me. 
Um, so, but man, I really enjoy that. I'm going to say that's a four. The palette, um, I'm also going to say that, man, I debated on whether to make that a three or a four to me. Um, only, I think I'm going to make it a three only because it's pretty standard. And like I would, in, in, which I love, um, you know, there's nothing wrong with the normal. Um, with this product, I would just expect a little bit more from it. You know what I mean? Like I'm looking for, sure. you know, thick leather, you know, just like oily. Um, I'd love to pick up on that. Um, and I don't pick that, I don't pick up, pick up on that on the palette or the finish um the finish to me lasts longer than will says um but uh i actually do like the finish pretty good i'm gonna give that a four so i've got a four on the um nose a three on the palette four on the finish um the finish just it lasts long it i mean it's not it doesn't blow my ever loving mind. Sure. <laughs> um, one of my favorite finishes that I've had recently is the 2017 George T. Stag. And I mean, um, and it's not as good as last year's, but it's pretty dang good. But I love the finish on that. That's like the saving grace of the bottle to yeah. me. Um, and, uh, but yeah, I mean, this finish, it lasts good. It's just, it just doesn't wow me, you know? Um, but I will give it a four. I like the length of the finish because I feel if if I can experience a bourbon, you know, 10 seconds after I've had it and I'm still trying to like, you know, slosh around a little bit, like, man, it's still with me. Mm-hmm. Um, that's worth notating. Um, and then on the, um, on the price, price. Oh, man. man, you know, it's a, it's it's a, a pretty, it's a good, pretty one. good one. It's a pretty good point. price it's point. A pretty it's a pretty standard, standard price point for me. For me. Um, I, will I will say this, this man. If you, you go, go to Heaven, Heaven Hill, Hill and go, and to, the go to the gift shop, shop and they have these in stock, stock. They're, they're selling them for $74.99. And I'm going to yep. say this. It is not $74.99 is high. Yeah. Um, yeah, that's why we said $60. I would probably. I know, I know. But I'm saying, but I mean, Heaven Hill's valuing it, you know, higher. Um, and Heaven Hill, but, Heaven Hill puts up that uh, uh, what is it? The disclaimer that says, uh, as as does every distillery on uh, in Kentucky that is like, uh, we're not trying to um, compete with local dis- uh, local liquor stores or whatever. Um, so right, yeah, right. And and two, they're you know. When everything's dried up at the at the liquor stores, they still have it, so right. they're going to sell it, and they're making bank yeah. <laughs> on it. Yep. Um, and because they're literally they're marked up on top of retail at that point, and and if retailers are making money off of it, then they're making a lot of money off of it. Being higher than that, yeah. Um, the That's price, man, I'm going to I'm going to say the price is confusing <laughs> to me. Um, I'm going to I'm going to I'm going to give the price I'm going to give a price of three. Um, so we're gonna round this bad boy out at fourteen. I think is that what my number is? I six and eight. I did. I did. I did four. Yeah, that's, that's 14. fourteen. Three, four, three. So Grease is going um, with the fourteen out of twenty. Yeah. Uh, one thing you'll learn about the Grease is he's actually a lot more critical of whiskey than I am. I th- I think that's fair. Um, yeah. I I like that. Man, yeah, I am, dude. I mean, we we tried we tried this. Uh, and it's it's coming out this next week. We tried this uh, Wyoming whiskey, man. And oh yeah, um, I saw that on the we'll, group. Yeah, yeah. And uh, man, like I I need to I need to revisit some things. Like I feel like half the time I'm a little bit too harsh on it. But man, when I hit something that's just like lights out. Like I, I freak out and I can't get enough of it. Yeah. I will say this. There's definitely, there's definitely a portion of people out there that, you know, in everybody's palates different, but I think like will hits on, you know, people's palates pretty good on our show. Perry, I'm sure like on your show, like people are like relating to your palate. <laughs> um, and then there's also, Aww. you know, there's also there's also a different you know and so like different people are gonna have different palettes but I think there's like some percentages out there of like man I mean 
Grease hit the nail on the head. Like Will didn't like that, but Grease did. So yeah. I tried it. Man, it's great. You know, definitely. Like so, I mean, there's different. You know, different people out there. Um, it's important. And what I've learned in like the bourbon whiskey industry, um, you know, with people like Bernie Lubbers and Fred Minnick and like these people out Definitely. there that are, you know, ambassadors for whiskey, um, you know, like um, I don't line up with Fred Minnick. I mean, honestly, in, you know, in, I'd probably say more times than not, I don't. Um, and that's okay. Like I, I like Fred Minnick as a guy. I think he's a great writer. I think he's a great advocate for whiskey. Um, you know, it, it's just important like to find somebody out there. Um, and I don't want to say of influence, but I will say this. If I had a guy that I was like, Oh my gosh, that palette's amazing. Jeff Schwartz is my palate guy. <laughs> he is up in Wisconsin Jeff he Schwartz is Burn awesome, man. Manter. I love Jeff. Yep. Dude, he's freaking yep. he's freaking great. Jeff and is here's fantastic. the deal. Jeff Schwartz, nine <laughs> times out of ten, is gonna save me money. And if you can find a guy out there that you know you respect and you enjoy and you relate to his palate, and you just and if you're questionable on something, you could ask that person, or if you hear or see him write about it. Then you can take it to the bank, save yourself a little money and heartache, yep. and uh, and and you know nine times out of ten, I mean everything he chooses, I'm I'm gonna I, I freaking love you it. You know, it's I, great. I, I I get that because um, I I'm gonna throw back to uh, it's Bourbon Night mm-hmm. on uh, on YouTube. Um, a lot of what my palate falls in line with is uh, the same thing that uh, Sarah on it uh, it's bourbon night likes um <coughs> sorry um so, so you yeah, like I, I, you like evan williams uh 1783 then i do actually like seven, yeah. uh, 1783 quite a bit yeah um not i i went into it like oh i'm not gonna like this very much and uh as soon as i tried it i was like yeah this isn't uh this isn't too bad mm-hmm. um so yeah anyway no i i, I get uh get what you're saying there grease um, I'm going to, I'm going to give my, my review of the, uh, the bourbon here real quick. Um, nose, I would probably give it a three. Mm-hmm. Um, I, I don't think that it is too overly impressive. Um, you know, it, it, it has some of the things that I like, uh, in terms of like traditional, um, <clears throat> bourbon notes on, uh, on, on noses and everything um on the palette i think i would definitely give it a five um just because uh it 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 brings everything together in such a really succinct and and beautiful way that well it's hard not to give it a five for you when you say this is everything that i want in a exactly person. yeah yeah <laughs> i mean it 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 yeah, it, it does, man. I mean, yeah. you, you, it, this this is a great, you know, the mash bill is pretty standard. I feel like I don't think there's anything wonky out there. Sure, you throw it barrel. Well, it's you weird it barrel though is that they use they filters. use rice instead of um, corn, so it's a really weird mash bill grease. But yeah, it's pretty standard. What? Really? Nothing. What? I'm just. Me- it's a, that's how you what? mess with the grease. That's all you do. What? Oh, freaking <laughs> a rice will rice. I was yeah. freaking out there for a second too. I was like, like it couldn't be bourbon uh, if there wasn't corn. Matter. Come on, guys. Come on. Uh, oh, uh, man. This geez. is wait. Hang on. Isn't sake? Isn't that kind of like a rice based wine? Yes. Sake. Yeah, it's a rice wine. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. This ain't sake. Yeah. Um. Anyway, so uh, I gave it a three on the nose. I gave it a five on the palate. Uh, finish, I'm going to give it a four, um, just because I get a lot more of the heat than I do, uh, anything else. Um, but I, I still, um, hang on to a lot of like the, the chocolate and the, um, the nuttiness of it, uh, that is pretty prominent, um, throughout the bourbon. And uh, again, I, I I paid like sixty or sixty five dollars for it. So uh, as far as price goes, I'm gonna give it a four. Um, so what did what did I go? I went three, five, four, and four. Uh huh. Right. Eighteen. Um, no. So that, Can I, I change can't my add. price? No, that's to 60, four. Wait, wait, 
Wait. <laughs> three, it's five, 16. four, and four. That's sixteen. sixteen. Yeah. I said Was eighteen. That, can I can I change my price <laughs> thing to four? Here's the reason why. A twelve yeah, sure. year old Go non-chill it. filtered product at barrel strength, single barrel. Wait, this ain't a single barrel. This is a small yep. batch. Yep, nope. I'm st- I'm sticking with a three. Oh if my this gosh. was a single you barrel product, I'd, 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 I'd give it a four. I know I'm ridiculous. I like small batch more care. than single barrel most of the time. Oh, I like well, it's more consistent. It's more, I don't know, it's, it's more about Right, thing. if I'm just going to go buy an uh, Elijah Craig uh, barrel strength off the shelf, you know, I'm probably going to want it to be a small batch. But if it's someone I know that picked it, that I know I like their palate, then I'll be fine with the single barrel. I'm, I y'all prefer f- small batch stuff. Do y'all find uh, the the barrel proof pretty often? Uh, on the shelf? No, no, no. This is hard. It's hard to find. Yeah, you, you. I've never seen it on the shelf in Nashville. No, hundred percent. Yeah, I've, seen I've, it I've only snagged it either. from from folks that are like, "Hey, do you want it?" So, yeah, exactly right. Yeah, right. you have to stumble upon it, and you have to let your friends know that you want it. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you're looking for Good it. Deal. Um. So, I I want to uh, segue into uh, what I like to call. Uh, recommendations, mm-hmm. um, which is uh, just kind of uh, if you guys have something that uh, you have been enjoying, it doesn't have to be uh, bourbon or alcohol based um, over the past few weeks, mm-hmm. um, and you want other people to uh, enjoy that, uh, what would you recommend? I'm gonna let Grease take the uh, take the reins first on this one. <laughs> I think I probably know what Grease is going to recommend, but uh... good cut point here. I was texting with my wife. She's uh, so I'm going to need you to ask me that question again. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm going to leave that in. I'm going to yeah, leave that's that not in. A cut point, Grease. That's All right. no, no, no. no. That, that's staying Fine. in. Uh, uh, Grease, out of out of anything that you have enjoyed over the past week to th- whenever, uh, what would you recommend to people? And uh, I'm not I'm not trying to, uh, you know, simplify it down to bourbon or to alcohol or whatever. Are we talking about price here? Oh, no, dude. Like, no, like, I'm just like whatever. Yeah, whatever. I mean, if you've got a favorite TV show, if you've got a favorite, uh, you know, your your crystal burgers or whatever. <laughs> oh, well, but yeah, I mean, crystals. I'd, I'd stay clear of those doubles with cheese. That <laughs> bearded Dram gave me the other day. But other than that. Um, no, Call man, back. I'm so, di- I'm, you know, I finally got, um, a bottle of Blanton straight from the barrel. It's freaking brilliant. Mm. It is fantastic. Um, I've got this 1982, uh, eight year old, uh, wild Turkey. It is fantastic in its own little way. Um, and the other thing that I'm really loving right now, actually a couple more things. Um, <laughs> <laughs> How many recommendations do you have, Grease? Oh, man, just, That's I the mean, beauty of this well, I mean, segment when, is it just doesn't matter. I mean, when Grease, you, I'm clear. I'm mid haircut right well, now. Well, he said the last week. <laughs> he said the last, I mean, we've been. I mean, you didn't say what I what I like yesterday. I mean, what I liked yesterday. <laughs> All right, so it, the George T. Stag this year is fantastic. I'm telling you right now, one of the better finishes I've had in a long time. And then an all around beautiful, beautiful product is going to be that Al Rye. I love that oh, Al I Rye. I love the Rye. Um, yeah. It's so fantastic. Every, everything Grease has said is alcohol related. So I don't, I still don't know if you heard the full, <laughs> the full like premise of this segment. But oh, like what I like and just regular, just regular yeah. stuff. Now and laters. I love now and laters. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sure. Sure. Yeah. The candy. Yeah. Yeah. Like cherry, cherry, lime, and grape. I mean, you know, rotate them out accordingly. But man, those things are solid, dude. <laughs> I love those now and later. And I love deer jerky. I've got some, I got some bros deer, that are going Deer jerky? Soon, Is that what I heard? I don't have, I, deer jerky. Yeah. Okay. I just want to make sure that I was clear on yeah, that. You uh, can't, you can't legally buy it. Well, I guess you can't legally sell it, but here's the deal: I think you, you can gotta, in you Kentucky, find, but uh, you gotta find a buddy that uh, <laughs> that just scored a buck or something or a doe. I don't know what's in season right now, but man, when uh, there's something else about that deer jerky, I freaking love that. <laughs> Way better than Slim Jim. I'm gonna go ahead and tell you that right now. Uh, Will, what do you have to recommend? 
Okay, so uh, I'll do I'll do a, a whiskey product after, but first, I think, and this is it's actually been out for a couple months, but everyone, if you want to watch a fascinating miniseries, everyone should watch the murder of Lacey Peterson. It was done by A and E, and nice. it will make you question everything you know about uh, media. Uh, that entire story, which, uh, you know, if you know anything about it, you probably like, oh, yeah, yeah, Scott Peterson just killed his wife and now he's serving life in prison. Really fascinating, really well done. And everyone should check that out. Um, so I'll recommend that. I I tell everyone to watch that because it was pretty mind blowing and I don't think it got enough press um, and it was a really good show. And whiskey wise, I would say. um Let's see. What what do I recommend that I've really been loving? I, I'm a, a really big fan of the Willet Three Year Rise. Um, oh, nice. Yeah, yeah. That's so I, th- I think it's a really it's a really good value. Um, I, I really like the Peerless Rye, but you can get a Three Year Rye that is almost as good for fifty bucks. And I really like it. So nice. Yeah. Yeah. I side by he he made me he made me side by side. Um, those and uh they were they were both very unique and very good in their own ways cool um i i am going to recommend um what am i going to recommend um ty smile of, <laughs> ty smile in in uh, uh-huh. richmond kentucky um uh-huh. come and come and uh, visit us we'd be happy to hang out with you um, there are some good liquor stores in, in Richmond as well. Uh, liquor World, Liquor Mart. Uh, what's it? What is it? It's not Liquor Corner. There's one that's uh, a drive through right across the street from Ty Smile. Oh, uh, that's that's Liquor Mart. Liquor yeah, Mart yeah, one. Yeah. There's there's two Liquor Marts in, in Richmond. Um, that that's getting into a whole nother conversation. And everything. <laughs> um, uh yeah, come come check out Ty Smile. Um, I'm trying to think. Um, I've been listening to a lot of uh, Miles Davis recently. Nice. Uh, listen, listen. You to, drew him. I saw you drew him on Facebook. I did. Earlier. I did. I was uh, kind of. Uh, I was a little bored in uh, <laughs> in my jazz history class, and I was like, oh, I'm just gonna draw Miles Davis. It didn't. Doesn't matter. Um, listen to some, uh, <laughs> listen to some Miles Davis. Um, where are you going to school? Uh, Eastern, Eastern Kentucky. Kentucky University. Yeah. In Richmond, Kentucky. It. Yeah. Oh, uh, cool. cheapest. Is it the Minutemen? Is that your, is that your mascot? No, our, our mascot is the, uh, Colonels. Colonel. I, that's, I'm an idiot. Like, why did I yeah. not think there's, Kentucky there's, uh, Colonels? There's Minutemen Press. Yeah, or printing or whatever in, uh-huh. in Richmond, but uh, that that's that's a whole nother graphic design conversation. <laughs> 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 anyway, so I'm gonna cap it off at uh, tie smile and uh, whatever else I said. I don't I don't remember. Doesn't matter. Um, uh, Miles Will Davis. and Agri- Will and agrees. Uh, first off, I want to say thank you guys so much for being on the show. I really appreciated it. Yeah, thanks for um, having us. We, we've we've been on uh, a lot longer than I thought we were going to. Uh, earlier in the week, Grease just was, let it ride, dude. Yeah, Grease. When when you got a long show, you just let it ride. That's what I tell Will. <laughs> Will's like, man, we got to shorten this thing up. I'm like, no, man. Just let it ride. Hey, I do I do want to say this because uh, for for all of you folks that hung with us, I'm mid haircut right now. My wife really? is like. She's like, honey, you need a haircut. And so I was like, okay. <laughs> so she starts cutting my hair, and we get to like, and that's why I'm like, I need a couple more minutes. I uh, need a couple more minutes. And then I come up here, and she just texted me and said, uh, I'm ready to finish your hair. So. And y'all, y'all are hanging out around like 11 p.m. <laughs> right now. <laughs> you know, we're good. We're good. Um, guys, uh, if they want to find you guys on uh, social media, um, podcast or otherwise, where can they find you? The at the podcast on basically any social media platform, and by that I mean Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, um, or go to the podcast p o d c a s k dot com, and that's where well, you got to do the too, right? Yeah, I or said no? the. 
I said, <laughs> well, yeah, but you, yeah, but you didn't spell the, and so that would be okay. Confusing. So the website is T H E P O D C A S K dot C O M. Yep. Um, and that's uh, that there's has the- links to our social media and uh, also to uh, uh, you can listen to the shows there as well. I, I like that the um, uh, the producer basically switched, uh, switched from Will to the Grease. Uh, it happens most <laughs> days. <laughs> yeah. Well, OK, I will say one more thing. All right, uh-huh. go. <laughs> the f- the fate and and Perry and Perry's a part he of is, this. He is too. Yeah. And so uh, this is this is an important addition. Um, on our the our Facebook page is fine. Like us on there. That's great. But there's this group called the Podcasters. Um, yeah. And you got to request to join us. And man, it's kind of just taken on its whole new realm. Like I don't even know. I mean, Will and I comment as much as we possibly can, and we post when we can, but, I mean, yeah, it's pretty much, like, just, like, listener ran at this point. Like, hey, and <laughs> Green, did you notice, did you <laughs> notice what that. I did? I linked our, our Facebook page at the podcast. I saw that. I linked it to the podcasters group, so it's easier to find. I saw that. Oh, like if you like the Facebook page, it's linked so you can so like that's find why, it. That's why every time I try to post in there, I have to like tell it, no, mm-hmm. I'm not the podcast. Right. I'm, I'm the real. I mean, you can, you can post, post from, the real. You can green. post whichever one you want. But yeah. <laughs> oh, wait, no, sorry. I'm greasy grease on Facebook. I'm the real grease on Instagram. I, I keep forgetting that. Uh, so if you want to reach uh, this show, um, you can email us. Uh, this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com. Uh, you can also hit us up at, uh, at my bourbon shop, um, on Instagram and Twitter. Uh, if you use, and, do, and you've got, you've got some sweet teas, bro. Yes, we do. Yeah. Uh, if you want to, if you want to, if you're check looking out our, for some our... bourbon merchandise, you got to hit up Perry's shop. Yeah. If you want to check Good out stuff. the, uh, the shirts and everything, uh, it's not just shirts. It's, uh, um, coffee mugs you know, and uh, art. Some would call it paraphernalia. Look, I, I, I just want to say, um, I'm feeling a little greasy tonight. Um, <laughs> <laughs> this is the greasiest, Me too, Perry. This is the greasiest Me I've been too. on the podcast so far. Um, Welcome to I'm, the club. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying. I'm trying to struggle through. Uh, I was making y'all better men. <laughs> Um, anyway, so, uh, <laughs> um, this is my bourbon shop at gmail.com at my bourbon shop on Instagram and Twitter, um, bourbon shop.threadless.com. If you want to go and check out, we actually have a bourbon podcast, uh, shirt up there. Uh, if you would like to go ahead and buy that. Um, if you want to hit me up on my personal accounts, uh, I'm pretty much P Ritter 1492, uh, like all across the, the, the board, um, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, whatever. Um, and, uh, if you have any questions, if you have any comments, let us know. Uh, we'd be happy to, uh, get, uh, reply to you or answer those questions on air. Um, and leave some five star reviews for Perry. please review. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> guys, it's please real, it's the real simple on on iTunes now. If you go, so here I'm going to explain them for you, Perry. Is that please if do. you go please on do. your on your iTunes app on your iPhone, um, it, it's like you go look at the show, and then you you have to scroll down, like get past the episodes, but. There are newer you podcasts, so you don't have to be like about you, it. Yeah, you scroll down past the episodes, and yep. then it says it shows like what their rating is, and then you're gonna say you're gonna say write a review. You're not just gonna click the star amount. You're gonna click write a review, Please. and then you're you're gonna Please. click the five star at the top, and then you're gonna put in your review, and you're gonna say how much you love the show, and that's what you're gonna do for Perry, because Perry's well, our boy. You, yeah, y'all you quit just, being terrible. You just warmed my heart there, there, Will. Um, I mean, you got to give people instructions. Maybe, they need it. Yeah. Now, I I, I got to ask you before we we wrap everything up because I got some flack for uh, uh, promoting my show in the podcasters group. Is it okay to promote <laughs> this episode? 
<laughs> yeah, oh, a Perry. Yeah, yeah, let yeah. me go ahead. Let me go ahead and tell you something. Perry. Joe Bourbon may get salty. Our listeners but... are dedicated and they get salty. <laughs> I can get over um, salty. I just can't get over. We it. are happy for you. We are in your corner. Um, this is a community. <laughs> we will never ever say anything <laughs> bad about any other bourbon podcast. We will never. I mean, this is a. Uh, I mean, we benefit actually from cross sure, collaboration. And- and and marketing of it. I mean, like this does nothing but good things for for both of us. Well, I'm gonna go ahead and tell you, Perry. I just appreciate everything you do for our country. And uh, <laughs> you know, if there's any if there's if there's any point in this show um, that you have not understood my gratitude for making me pop the number one bottle of whatever it's called bourbon. A bourbon oh, authority. Grease. The grease, man. What do you mean? I'm too greasy for I this. I opened a bottle I wasn't supposed to, but I did it for you. I just oh, I appreciate everything that you did. That's my that's my grease right there. Um, yeah. Well, let, all right. Let's let's uh, wrap things up real quick. Uh, grease and Will, thank you all so much for for being on the show. I really really yeah. Appreciate thanks for having it. us, Perry. Dude, yeah. love it anytime. Man. Yeah. Um, you know, go check them out. Uh, the podcast on uh, uh, where are all you all at? Because I know it's in iTunes for sure, but are you all anywhere else? iTunes, Google Play, Stitcher. you can actually listen directly on our website. Yeah, yeah, Stitcher. Uh, yeah, if you go to thepodcast.com, you can actually listen right directly on that if you're just on your web browser. I mean, if you're working the nine to five database entry and need something on the back end to keep you entertained. Just go to the podcast.com and hit the play button and it'll cycle through all of them. Awesome. Well, guys, again, thank you all so I much for being point, on the show. I think at this point we're good. I mean, we are probably have enough content on there to at least get you through a week. If I uh, yeah. <laughs> It's just me. I'm going to break this up into like uh, 10 minute episodes for the next few weeks. There uh, you go. Yeah, that's how uh, to get, there you your, go. get your numbers yeah. up. Uh, guys, thank you all so much for being on the show. I can't wait to have you guys back. This has been a lot of fun. Um, Man, we appreciate it. Thanks for having us, Barry. And, uh, you know, check us out on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter. Um, You know, hit us up, too. Uh, This is mybourbonshop at gmail.com. Thank you all so much for listening. Uh, Give us a rate and review on iTunes or whatever you're on. Um... You know, we can't wait to drink some more bourbon with you. But until then, my name is Perry, and this is my bourbon podcast. <laughs>